Oh my god, I can't, no, that, that is so bizarre. That is so bizarre. That's so not what happens over it. So all that, and then she goes to... Hi everyone, in this video I am doing a reaction video. Uh, I don't know whether this is actually going to be worthy of any reaction, but maybe it might be. Um, it's a video that came up randomly on my channel from B&H, and it's wedding photographer schedule with Karen Hill. Haven't heard of her before, uh, don't know anything about this. Uh, wedding photography tips. Um, so uh, this is my opinion on some of the tips that we can get from our wedding photography uh, pro. Um, and uh, this is just if I have any input into this as well. Hi, I'm Karen Hill from Karen Hill Photography, Fine Art Wedding Photography. I'm here to talk to you today about creating a timeline with your clients and having a successful wedding day shoot. So the first thing I want... Uh, straight away, lovely photos. Uh, nothing, nothing bad can be said about those. Um, nice little shots of the rings. Let's see, fine art. Fine art wedding photography. Fine art wedding photography. Uh, that that's a that's a that's a biggie. That's a biggie. I'd say. Um, you've got like documentary um, wedding photography, uh, reportage. Wedding photography, that's not one, but fine art wedding photography, that's uh, a, a tough level to get into there. But let, let's, let's see what else you've seen there. I'm here to talk to you today about creating a timeline with your clients. Creating a timeline with your clients. Uh, I'm guessing for like the wedding album, creating the timeline. You're shooting a wedding though. You follow that natural process, unless, what I suspect, maybe this is like if you have a wedding which is over multiple days. Uh, generally, most weddings photography does follow a timeline, as in you get there at the start, you shoot until the end. That's that's how I imagine it to, to be going on there. Uh, but again, some weddings may be massive and going for multiple days and be in multiple locations and and maybe it's trying to figure out how to get the photos to reflect the idea of the wedding better than the actual uh, process within the wedding. If that makes sense, I, don't, I have no idea what I'm talking about here. And having a successful wedding day shoot. So the first thing I do when I am contracting... First of all, checking out the cameras there. Contacts, I'm guessing that's a Hasselblad on the left, and a Canon 5D something. So we're going medium format film, it looks like, and full frame uh, digital SLR. So, quite a variety of stuff going on here. Like your pictures in the background as well. For a wedding and we're getting ready to work on a timeline together, I send out a questionnaire. I send it out about a month before the wedding and the client fills in all the questions and I get an idea of locations, addresses, size of the wedding, size of the bridal party, and their desires for the day. Uh, I would be surprised that you'd wait until one month before the wedding to find out about the size of the wedding. Like that's usually as the person, as the uh, bride and groom are booking you. First question is how big is the wedding? That that's usually uh, part of the the price structure. Is if you go well, how how big is your wedding? I need to figure out how expensive it's going to be because the bigger the wedding the more people to shoot but the more requirement for having maybe like a second shooter um, and uh, if it is like oh yeah we're going to be in three different places you've got added travel expenses and all that kind of stuff so before way before a month before the, the wedding I would be wanting to know all that information well beforehand um, so uh, the other uh, so yeah I'm, I'm surprised about keeping it until just the last last month to find out that meaning, um, the last question on the questionnaire is, how do you envision the photographs for your day? Dot, dot, dot. And I find that... Oh, no. How do you envision your photographs for the day? Again, that's one which I would almost have imagined that the clients who are booking you will be looking at the work that you do and be booking you because of the uh, look and the style that you already have. So I... Be, I'm, I'm guessing this is not a cheap wedding photographer, she's a very professional. Um, I would be surprised if somebody would just say, hey, we're booking you for a wedding, and we want your photos to look like this other photographer that we really like. So, uh, I, again, there, there's variances within people's style. Um, we like it brighter, we like it more... 
more funky angles, like a more straight on, punky, um, but unless within your own portfolio you have that range of styles, uh, I'd be surprised, I, I'd, I'd probably, again, that's something which I would have them inform me, uh, like why did they choose me in the first place uh, for doing the wedding, and that would be probably down to the style and the type of style which I use for certain weddings kind of stuff. Like, but, but again, let's, let's not go anywhere. That to be one of the best questions, because what they usually return to me is their thoughts, you know, that they want um, vintagey, Cool madman look. So. Vintagey, cool madman look is highly more dependent on locations, outfits, uh, style of venues. Well, I suppose that's kind of locations. Um, that you know, if you're getting shot in your local registry office and it looks like a council stationery cupboard then it's going to be pretty difficult to getting oh what really want a vintage looking kind of wedding shoot here it's like no it looks like an office so i again a lot of time i'm imagining it's far more educating your client um and just saying what is possible and what they are wanting from the images how much it's photographer and camera and lens dependent and how much it is everything else dependent that's just my thought well, I have sort of a cue from them of their visual experience, what they want. Um, I also work with the wedding planner to make sure that we're working together. And they I would definitely always be working with, if there is a wedding planner, always definitely try and be working with them. You don't want to be against them. They have a good idea of what I need and I have a good idea of what they need. So it's um, a perfect working relationship on the day of. Um, so the first thing that we do is we set ourselves up with the bride when she's getting ready, and I work with my husband, uh, Frank, so he starts with the men. And what I do is go in... Always good, double team there, uh, and, and quite a few times. Um, generally, all the weddings that I've shot, even with uh, like an assistant and all that kind of stuff, uh, it's not been like, oh, men can't come into the room where the women's getting ready. Well, not while they're like just getting ready, but pretty much once they're in their underpants, you can pretty much, there, there's not a like, no boys allowed uh, kind of rule. That may just be Scotland, maybe in other places it's different, but definitely there are some cases where I think, if I had a female photographer on site, she can deal with the girls, there's a little bit more, potential, a little bit more intimacy going on there or something. Um, I haven't noticed any issues with that myself, but again, sometimes some brides may be very nervous um, on the day and maybe a male presence in the venue where they're getting ready could be something which isn't great with them. And that, again, that's why I only ever shoot friends, so there isn't that issue. Um, but uh, yeah, having, if, if you are either female or you are a, if you're a male, it's great to have a female um, assistant that can do the kind of girls getting ready shots. And I take about 30 minutes to set up Still ice with the dress, the shoes, the veil, if they have one, the hair pieces, the jewelry. And I pick a nice corner with some nice light and I start setting up still lifes. And then I pop over and do some... Still lifes, again, I would say all that stuff there, lovely shots, should be a requirement of pretty much any wedding that you're shooting. Uh, if it is like a, a wedding, not just I'm getting married down the local pub. Um, if it's an actual wedding, all those shots that you just saw there should definitely be in your checklist of things that you need to get. And, and the mirror shot, classic. Got, got to have that. Shots the bride getting ready with the hair and makeup. And pop Again, not too many shots of the bride before she's got her makeup on. It's, it's like, like, a lot of them are just like, yeah, I'm, I'm still getting my eyes and my lips done. Could you not take any photos until I'm looking good, please? Uh, so it's something to be wary of back over to finish with the dress and the invitation and the shoes and when I have that all recorded then I'm ready the bride usually is ready to get dressed so I, I get shots of her getting in the dress you know toasts with bridesmaids hugs with mom all the usual shots that are actually really important because they all really important all the usual shots okay so I think we've just so far two and a half minutes into this this is bog standard uh wedding checklist got to get all these done no questions about it if you're not getting these done and that's your style of not getting these done that's a different style i don't know what that is i'll tell the wedding day story and then we're off so usually we set up for either a first look or we're headed straight to the ceremony if 
if we're headed for the first slip, then we have to coordinate with the second shooter with Frank. Ooh, first look. I've never done that before. Or I'm guessing that's where the bride meets the husband before the ceremony. I don't think I've ever shot a wedding where that's happened. That, maybe that, is that a new thing? I don't know. And Frank's going to bring the man and the groom in particular to the bride and they're going to see each other for the first time. And that's a, a wonderful shot. And I always love the expressions because they get so excited to see each other. So once that's done... I thought that was bad luck. Was that a bad luck? Seeing the bride before you get married in her bride's dress. We do portraits of the bride and groom. And I like to have 20 to 30 minutes alone with them. And Whoa, right. 20 to 30 minutes with the bride and groom before before getting married. That's something I've never experienced or done or been requested of before. Or it has never been in a in a timeline of any kind of weddings which I've ever shot or been at either. It's all like, maybe it's just a UK thing, maybe it's just a Scotland thing, but every wedding I've been to, it's always been after the actual ceremony. This is mind blowing for me just now. And that's kind of the most important. And also 30 minutes, that's a long amount of time. Part of the day for me. So the first thing I'm looking for is light and we follow light wherever we are. We're looking for light. If there's a little bit of light over there, we go over there and we start shooting. What I love is backlight and I love... Lovely, lovely shots here uh, and just great, great tip here, uh, as you can just see from these images, is a lot of the time people will feel sometimes a bit awkward smiling at the camera or they can smile at the camera but they'll be, be doing this. And it just won't be natural. So just have them looking at each other, arm around, they don't need to be full on hug or anything like that, but just arm around, looking at each other is one of the, the just great ways to make them so that they're not having to have that camera face. Um, and she, she's getting that done uh, brilliantly there. In fact, just go back to that other one there. Yeah, perfect. Just looking into each other's eyes and, and just like, yeah, it's, it's a cute, cute like, look, very nice right, look. There again, I'm looking at each other. Right in front of the light and I start shooting. And of course, people get nervous. So not used to being photographed so first thing i tell them is i'm not here you guys are alone it's your wedding day brilliant brilliant tip there as well say yeah i'm not here you guys are alone this is your wedding day lovely way to um to interact with the people i always i go with a different route of going i'm a ninja i'm an invisible ninja just you do what you want to do i will get the shots just you won't even see me that that's usually my term i'm the wedding ninja um, and uh, and so the same kind of idea from her, she's like, just don't even realise I'm here. And that makes them hopefully a little more comfortable, first of all. And I think that's really important, because what I'm looking for is really authentic moments. I don't like to interfere, and I don't like to set up a lot. I like to see what's there and shoot it. So uh, That's, yeah, absolutely good, trying to get authentic moments. Again, sometimes with um, time restrictions, uh, and and sometimes there's just too much of a crowd. You kind of need to organise a lot of stuff. So so again, this is not me giving her advice. This is me just giving additional advice uh, on top. Uh, so yeah, getting authentic moments is always lovely. Sometimes you do need to push a crowd into certain locations. Um, all these shots that you've seen here, it looks like it's been very calm and relaxed. And it's like the pretty much a lot of weddings I've been to. The authentic moments are stress, 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 stress. Where are all my nails? Where are my nails? Oh my god! The, uh, that's not a great shot. The next part of the day is a family group shot and bridal party. So what I like to do is set aside thirty minutes for that, and that's for ten. Is this still before the actual wedding? Another thirty minutes. We're going to like two hours. Surely not. This must have been after the wedding. Maybe twelve portraits. We try to keep it short and sweet, and that's really important because we don't want to spend the whole day doing portraits. So the group shots are the immediate family on either side and then shots with the parents on either side and then the full bridal party and then all the guys and then all the girls. Uh, perfect advice. Cannot disagree with that. Uh, something I would say everyone that's getting into wedding photography, have that on your list. If you don't have it on your list, any bride or groom, uh, okay, any bride that has gone through all the wedding magazines that she's ever read will be giving you these lists already anyway. And then we do a shot with everyone together. And I feel like that's the most important shot. The shot that I do with everyone together is usually just before the party 
afterwards, or just after the actual wedding, get everyone outside. I get to a high up location, shoot down uh, for that. Um, but uh, yeah, still definitely, this must be all after the wedding. I must have missed a bit there. Today. So that's the bridal party, and the family's on both sides with the couple. So that's um, one side. Liking the use of a truck in that shot. Cool, cool shot. Quite brave with the lighting angle. I feel like the sun is really coming straight down from behind, blowing out the side of the backs of their heads. Um, and the, yeah, their, their faces would normally all be in shadow. So that is a good bit of uh, editing to get the, the exposure of their faces all looking good uh, in that shot. So yeah, good work. I have that shot. I feel like I'm done. I feel like that's the shot. So from there, we um, usually go to the ceremony or off to... Oh my god, I can't... No, that, that is so bizarre. That is so bizarre. That's so not what happens. With it. So all that, and then she goes to the ceremony. Is this an American thing? Is it something I've never experienced before? I've never heard of. Doing all that before the actual wedding. That's... That's, that's totally flipped up, upside down, in terms of... this any wedding that I've shot or been at. To the reception. So if we're going to the ceremony, um, since I work with Frank, he does the second shooting. He's usually up in choir loft or at some different vantage point for me, which is fantastic because he gets the best shots. And I'm secretly always a little jealous that he gets to do those shots because those are, that's the dream shot with the bride coming down the aisle from above. I, I love that. Um, so then I'm usually in front. Oh my god, how cute is that picture? Also, at the same time, how spooky is it with that weird light going through it, like a ghost? That's weird. That's weird. I wonder if that's something to do with film. Photographing everyone coming down the aisle, and then we quietly walk around and we're photographing the ceremony. You know, there's a lot of iPhones at the church these days, and that's an interesting problem or, you know, addition to the day is working with all the iPhones lying in the aisles now. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. Gritted teeth. Fucking iPhones. Urgh. You can tell that's what she's really saying on the inside. Um, so the other thing, after the ceremony, my favorite shot is actually the bride and groom coming out of the church. If there's a church or a synagogue or a home, wherever we are where they're passing through a doorway with backlight, because I love backlight. Um, so I'm inside. Clearly, I've seen quite a lot of shows here where she's been working with a lot of backlight. Focusing on the couple, and Frank is outside waiting for them to come out. And that's that's the moment, too, that I feel like kind of the, the moment that they're married and they're happy and everyone's there. So the group shot list is usually about 10 or 12. Now, now it's another group shot list. That's... Interesting. In 30 minutes, and every once in a while I get a list from the bride wanting about, well, it could be about 50 group shots, and I have to gently let her know. That that shot is known as the, the Reservoir Dogs shot. We have the guys walking to the camera. The difficulty in shooting that is um, generally it can be fine. Some people find it really cheesy, really corny. Um, and it's very difficult to just get that shot. So that this is a, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you don't motor drive your, your photos uh, or your camera whenever you're shooting weddings. This is actually one of the times where motor driving may be the best because some, a lot of the time it'll just be guys going, <laughs> or what, what, and it will be the fraction of a second where everyone actually looks happy, looking at the camera, looking the right way. Um, so yeah, when people say, don't ever motor drive, I would actually probably say this is one of the few times in more modern society, in modern times. In the past, people probably thought, yes, yeah, it's great, I've never seen this before. I'm doing this, yes, I'm out of the camera. Now everyone's like, oh my god, I've seen this in every wedding already. Uh, so just something to be aware of uh, to maybe uh, do a lot of shots at this point to try and get one good one. Yeah, that's not the focus of the day for us, but we really want to concentrate on the candid moment. But again, that was a shot of just the guys doing a walk. That's totally the shot that we do over in, over, or I know of, over here. We do that before the wedding. That's like the guys getting on their way to the church. Not, hey, I've been married. I've just ditched my wife. My wife's over there doing something else. I'm out with my guys now. That's, that's a weird one. 
performance and that the group shots are 30 minutes where everyone is kind of tied to this moment and we don't want to extend it longer. So I let her know that what we do is focus on the main group shots and then we get everything else candidly. And uh, very often we do a lot of group shots during the reception and these are like college group shots. So those can be a lot of fun. I think good communication with the couple is really important. And again, with the families and with the wedding planner, making sure that we're all on the same page about the timing of the day and the expectations of the client and the amount of pictures they want. Um, so when we get a list of, let's say, 50 portraits and I have to let them know gently yet firmly that it would take about two hours to do 50 portraits and that that's not how we want to manage the day. We want to manage the day you know, quickly. I always say short and sweet. Short and sweet is exactly what we want to achieve. At the reception is another opportunity to photograph everyone when they're more relaxed and our goal is to photograph all the guests. So once we arrive for... So again, listen to that quick point you said there. Our goal is to photograph all the guests. So again, if you've just got 15, 20 close friends and family coming along, that's going to be a much smaller wedding than if you've got, I've got 3,000 people coming along. You're going to have to have a different budget uh, for those styles. That's why a lot of times people say, um, what, uh, why don't you advertise wedding prices on your website? It's like, well, the price, you may want a cheap wedding, but if you've got a million people coming to it and it's over in the other side of the country, the price is going to be completely different than if it was just a couple of people in the local pub or in the corner. Or the reception, it's usually cocktail hour, and Frank goes in and photographs everyone enjoying the cocktail hour, and I usually go in and photograph the room, and that's one of my favorite parts of the day, because um, I get to photograph all the details and the beauty that's been created by a team of people, and it's beautiful. Um, so I have uh, my camera on a tripod, usually, and, you know, some reflectors going, and, you know, I photograph the tables, the details the silverware, the flowers, uh, everything. The beginning of the reception is a lot of fun because usually the couple is announced into the room and usually they'll have, you know, everyone stand up and cheer and that's a lot of fun. Um, and after that, it's a lot of dancing, toasts, eating, dancing, fun. The timeline is an important tool for the day. It gets everyone on the same page, but it isn't set in stone. Every wedding has a flow and it's our job, my job, to tap into the flow. And I find every wedding has a life of its own. And that's really the joy of shooting a wedding. Cool. Interesting.